Why isn't emulation more popular for Nintendo? Nintendo's a franchise directed at children, so we all remember old games that change our lives and perspectives on many big things. But today, in a world where we have like 32 times the power of previous consoles in our pockets, why can't we find a way to play many of our most favorite titles? First off, what's up everybody? This is Brick and Bread and today we're talking about Nintendo's emulation strategies or the lack thereof. So hit that like button, consider subscribing for more content like this, and let's quickly get into this. I'll never forget my original Pokemon team facing off against the Elite Four and Fire Red, or the rigorous training I had to do to catch Bagon late in Meteor Falls and training him up for the late game. But soon after the 5-10 to 10 year span of my Nintendo consoles, Father Time's descent of our physically fabricated consoles renders them unusable. So what happens to the games? There are many people that would gladly spend their adult money on their childhood nostalgia. But in short, Nintendo seems to forget about them, living nowhere else but in our memories and on online forums. Many fans pretty much illegally emulate the games to be played on a phone or a laptop, but it seems like a no-brainer that Nintendo could easily stop this by offering more options for emulation straight from the source instead of the back corners of the dark web. So, why don't they? What's the negatives of releasing an extensive library of old games? What's the positives of keeping masterpieces behind lock and key? In reality, it gets more complicated than copying and pasting games on the Nintendo eStore. Mega Man, Castlevania, Final Fantasy. All these three games were available on Nintendos back in the day at some point. But the caveat is that they're all developed by a third-party developer, which is a common strategy that Nintendo used. They would charge insurmountably high licensing fees for their game cartridges while demanding high quality in their titles. So the content creators of that generation did the sensible thing at the time and jumped ship to other developers like Sony and Sega. Nintendo ended up benefiting from these extremely successful titles, but they don't own any of the IPs of the games, making them hard to sell from Nintendo. Nintendo used to offer the Virtual Boy on old consoles, but that stopped with the Switch. In 2006, when it was first introduced, the Virtual Boy was wildly popular, bringing in tens of millions of dollars at about $10 for each game. However, that number slowly decreased over the years and fans were, understandably, highly favoring their favorite titles instead of the whole library. By the way, $10 is a pretty high price for a game that's not even 10 kilobytes. Fans lost interest in purchasing the same games over and over and over again at these high prices, and the Virtual Boy stopped altogether. Finally, something called the Remaster Rule makes it hard for you to play your favorite titles. Nintendo re-releases games called Remasters, and let's face it, a remake is basically the same game with new rounded off graphics, maybe a new level, and 60 frames per second, but this time at full price. Wow. Nintendo can remake a game with minimal effort and sell it at 50 bucks and totally destroy the previous profits from the Virtual Boy. So how do we change this? How do we enjoy the titles we love so that everyone wins? The answer could come sooner rather than later with Nintendo's new subscription system for old titles. Instead of paying $10 for one or two games, pay around 5 bucks for a library of titles that you didn't necessarily choose but you ended up getting a pretty good value. One way to improve this could be to put the most popular games people are missing in the App Store like GTA, Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, and Mario Kart are already doing. If they're really feeling off the wall, they could hire the thousands of talented fans that emulate titles and ROM games to make this job easier. And that isn't something that may be totally foreign to Nintendo in the first place. But let me know in the comments what you guys think of the Nintendo emulation calamity. What are some solutions that you see working? Let me know in the comments and consider liking and subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Peace out.